From the Cronkite Studios in downtown Phoenix, this is Cronkite News. Election 2016 all comes down to tonight. Each candidate has made their case to hold the highest office in the nation. Now the decision is in the hands of the voters. Some long lines and a few glitches at polling locations, and at least one report of a voter with a gun. Full details from our partnership with the ProPublica Election Land Project to expose problems at the polls. And some of the youngest activists in the Valley make their election frustrations known by walking right out of school. Cronkite News starts now. It's election night 2016 and Cronkite News has reporters all across the state and around the country. We're tracking the long awaited end of this history making campaign season. Thanks for joining us here for Cronkite News on Arizona PBS. I'm Alex Capriello. And I'm Alexis Sucrath. Tonight we have crews in New York City, Washington DC and on the Arizona Mexico border. But we start here in the valley with a look at the polls. Our teams were there at polling locations, open to long lines, and a few technical problems. Cronkite News reporter Jesse Canales has been out there tracking it all day, talking to people and the voters. Early today, we made our way to this Salvation Army in downtown Phoenix, thanks to a tip based on ProPublica's election land project. Now, if you take a look behind me, things look smooth now. But earlier this morning, there were long lines, the computers were down, and voters say that they teared them. Voters told us the two computers at the Salvation Army voting precinct malfunctioned and they ended up waiting for hours. It just seems like the problem from the primary didn't seem to have been addressed. Some voters said they saw others become discouraged and leave, including a mother with her child who waited more than an hour. Poll workers didn't speak much Spanish, so there was some confusion. She took about five to ten minutes trying to get it straightened out. Finally, she just gave up and left. But voters told us once the computers began working, the process went much faster. I mean, it was a good experience. Didn't have to wait too long. It was pretty easy. I'd say mine was probably like an hour, an hour. which was about what I was expecting. So. We spoke to Maricopa County Recorder's Office yesterday and they said because they have more than 700 polling places and two computers at each location, they were prepared for the long lines. So we're just trying to make sure that those lines are kept to 30 minutes or less. The wait times were cut even shorter to 35 minutes down from two hours when the County Recorder's Office sent a third computer to help check voters in. In Phoenix, Jessica Nolis, Cronkite News. I'm Natalie Taranjoli. A polling place mandate mandated that all polling places no wait time not exceed 30 minutes anywhere in Maricopa County. But one advocacy group found that that plan quickly failed early this morning. After some voters experienced as much as five hour wait times during the March primary election, advocacy groups like Boston Arpaio felt compelled to monitor for similar problems today. I have been horrified of what I've seen so far. As early as six Oh, 05, we began to receive scores of calls with major voter suppression across the county. I waited about an hour to get in the building because computers were off, but once I was in the building, it took me another hour to get to the front of the line. Voter Dominic Medina is talking about the polling location at the downtown Phoenix Salvation Army. His concerns? How long it was taking them to question people about their IDs and where they lived and their addresses. Boston Arpaio claims it has received calls of problems from across the valley, including places like Levine, Avondale, and West Phoenix, certain communities with larger minority populations. The Democratic Party says the problems add up to voter suppression. This is places that people have gone to for years and years. They've always been registered, and now suddenly they're being told they're being turned away. So this location alone, people were waiting over two hours this morning to vote. But Boston Arpaio says that won't stop them from standing in line to vote and rally support against injustice. The message that I want to send today is that this is not going to hold us back. The county recorder's office told me that long lines and technical difficulties isn't necessarily voter suppression. She said with it being a presidential election, a longer wait is to be expected. Live in Phoenix, Natalie Taranjoli, Cronkite News. It's Arizona Secretary of State Michelle Reagan's job to make sure everything is running smoothly at the voting booth. Even with some long lines at the polls this morning, Reagan says for the most part, everything went off today without a hitch. Absolutely, we're seeing great turnout and we're seeing um, people, the good news is people getting in and out of the polls at a, at a nice pace. 
As part of our election 2016 coverage, we are partnering with many different news organizations to participate in ProPublica's Election Land Project, which is monitoring election irregularities like long lines in Arizona and around the country. Reporter Carla Liriano has been in our Election Land Center all day, and she joins us now with what they are seeing. Here at Election Land, we've been tracking what's going on at polling locations in Arizona and across the country. Throughout the day, we've been looking into our tip lines and what's going on on social media to identify voter access issues at the polls. Now, we're doing whatever we can to verify those posts. We've been looking at geotags, checking the legitimacy of social media accounts, and even speaking directly with some voters. We also reach out to them and say, hey, can you tell us a little bit more about this polling location? What, what are your cross streets? What, how long is the wait? Uh, tell me more about what you're seeing. We can't be everywhere, so we're actually able to interact with people in real time so they can, they can kind of be our eyes on the ground when we can't be there ourselves. We have about 30 journalists working out of the Election Land Center in Phoenix with a thousand more at hubs across the country. Now in Arizona today, the biggest story of the day has been the long lines. We've seen reports that some voters have waited up to five hours to vote today. We've also seen a lot of complaints about a lack of shade, keeping in mind that it was sunny and in the 80s today here in Phoenix. We had a similar issue earlier this year during the Arizona primary election. Now right here in Maricopa County, County Recorder Helen Purcell received a lot of criticism for the long lines following the primaries. She is up for re-election tonight, facing Democrat Adrian Fontes, so we'll see if today's long lines have any effect on that race as the results come in later tonight. In the Election Land Center, Carla Liriano, Cronkite News. Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump both put a lot of focus on their immigration policies over the past few months. Today, residents along the Arizona-Mexico border have their chance to vote for the candidate they think will best support them. Yesenia Beltran is part of the team of reporters in Nogales covering how residents there are reacting to Election Day. On this historic Election Day, many Latinos have come out and let their voices be heard. I'm standing in front of the Veterans for Foreign Wars here in downtown Nogales, Arizona. This is one of the places expecting a high number of voters, with 95% of residents being Latinos. This is one of the busiest polling places out of the four that we visited. But you can see the frustration in many of the voters' faces because they say, they're saying that they've waited over an hour to cast their ballots. And others left the voting location um, due to long wait lines. Cronkite News reporter Jamie Flores gives us an inside look on this large Latino voter turnout. Voters arrived early at this middle school in Nogales to cast ballots. Latino Heritage um, gave me applause on, the, uh, on my decision uh, based upon the uh, statements that uh, the candidate Trump made a uh, long time ago. Comments by Republican candidate Donald Trump about Mexican immigrants offended many in this border town. More than 90% of Nogales residents are Latino. Well, he wants to build the big wall, and I think, I think that's basically one of the most reasons he he goes against Mex uh, Mexican or Latinos. And many voters told us they're backing Hillary Clinton. Voter businesses in Arizona depend heavily on customers from Mexico, and the region also benefits from trade. We have the need to protect our country, but we also have the need to be good neighbors and to create good, strong relationships that go across country lines for the betterment of both countries. But some residents struggling to make ends meet support Trump. He'll make uh, new jobs. He'll bring the factories back. That's one of the main things I'm interested in because of my grandchildren, I want them to have a job when they grow up. Many who turned out to vote believe this election is historic. In Nogales, Jamie Flores, Cronkite News. While people here in Arizona are still waiting to cast their ballot, polls along the East Coast just closed. Our reporter, Claire Caulfield, joins us live from New York City, where both campaigns are holding watch parties tonight. I'm at the Javits Center in New York City outside Hillary Clinton's campaign election party and we actually just heard a cheer from inside this glass building when Vermont was declared for Clinton. It's 7 p.m. on the East Coast and there's been no other results reported yet, but the key swing states of Ohio and North Carolina are closing at 7.30. Um, Trump is also going to be in New York City across town and we have reporters there right now. Um, the only other place we've heard of is 
Guam, even though they don't have electoral college representation, they have historically predicted the election. In live in New York City, Claire Caulfield, Cronkite News. Election land isn't the only national monitoring event underway today. The Lawyers Committee for Civic Rights is also monitoring for voter suppression. Reporter Dylan Eddy visited the group's command center and joins us from our Washington Bureau. Dylan. That's right, Alex. The Election Protection National Command Center is taking calls from across the country. The goal, to ensure that all voters are able to cast a ballot that counts. It's been a busy day at the command center here in Washington. According to experts at the call center, this is the most robust election protection campaign ever launched. The tenor of the calls that we've gotten this year are different just because there's this heightened concern from voters about what to expect when they go to vote. This election cycle has been anything but normal, and this is being reflected at the polls. We're getting calls about people um, talking to voters about who they should vote for and voters feeling intimidated by that behavior. And I think part of that has to do with just the narrative that has come into the election. Incidents of intimidation from Election Day challengers have also been reported. There was a complaint that uh, challengers at the polling place standing behind elections officials were recording voters, like with their camera phones, as they were coming in and voting. Command center officials say that voters should not feel intimidated at the polls, but if the issue does arise, they should report the incident to poll workers immediately and then call the election protection hotline at 1-866-OUR-VOTE. According to officials at Election Protection, everything seems to be running smoothly across Arizona. The command center will be taking calls until 9 p.m. Eastern, reporting from Washington. That was Dylan. Democrats and Republicans are hosting watch parties in downtown Phoenix this evening, and we have a team of reporters at both. Katie Bieri is live at the Hyatt Regency with the GOP party. Okay. I'll hear it. At the Hyatt, at the GOP watch party, as you can see behind me, not a lot of people right now. Most guests are expected to file in around 6 or 7 p.m., but party officials are optimistic about the turnout. They say they've had the most media credentials requested of all time. I did talk to a party spokesperson who says he's confident that Republicans will win up and down the ballot this time around. More than security, was this is an organization. Uh, we have 23 media outfits out here that come from all over the country. We have five national television stations. We have people from Denmark, United Kingdom, Japan, and all the countries that are coming here to see the election results. And this event uh, is a combination of a lot of people working very hard for years. The 23 media, the 191 media credentials that we issued uh, in the last two days, and I uh, credit a lot of volunteers for helping us out. At the end of the day, we have to assemble this with a lot of help from a lot of people and a lot of cooperation. But not all party leaders are expected to be here tonight. It looks like Senator John McCain might be celebrating from an alternate location. Of course, we will stay with you, so stay with us on the air and, and online. In Phoenix, Katie Beery, Cronkite News. The Democratic Party is hosting their watch party at the Renaissance Phoenix in downtown. Joey Carrera joins us live from there. That's right, Alexa. Funnily enough, we're actually right across the street from the GOP party. Right now, we have a lot of members of the media that have set up, and we're waiting for more key players in the Arizona Democratic Party to show up as the polls close. We're expecting them to come in, and one of those that we have spoken to is actually Ann Kirkpatrick. We spoke to her about issues that her constituents are concerned with. We're visiting the polls. You know, I was in Nogales last night, launched a canvas down there, and uh, folks down there are really concerned if Trump becomes president because they don't want a wall at the border and they don't want 12 million people deported. That's right. So tonight we'll be seeing how the ticket turns out for Arizona, if we will turn blue, and we'll just have to wait until the polls close. In downtown Phoenix, Joey Carrera, Cronkite News. Students at North High School and Maryvale High School in Phoenix staged a walkout earlier this afternoon as one final push before the polls closed tonight at 7 p.m. The students walked out as a way to urge voters not to vote for either Sheriff Joe Arpaio or Donald Trump. After walking out and protesting, the students headed to Canvas and local communities to speak to voters face to face. We're going to train the students how to, how to Canvas in a, in, a, in a little bit, and about four or three, we're going to go to, we're gonna take an, uh, 
to communities where people who like there's an 80 percent chance that if you don't talk to him they will not vote we went to him to those communities and we're going to make sure they get those people to vote and get them to the polls the students hope to canvas at as many homes as possible as the end of the election nears, an Arizona nonprofit continues to pray all the way to the end. Cronkite News reporter Sarah Lichterman went to Maricopa County Recorder's Office to see how they're holding up. I'm on the corner of Jefferson and 3rd Avenue outside of the Maricopa County Recorder's Office here talking about Promise Arizona. They've been out here since 3 p.m. on Sunday for their 52 hour visual um, up until election night until what time? I'm sorry? Seven o'clock tonight. Seven o'clock tonight. And how do you feel this uh, event has been going? Well, it's been going really great. We've been receiving a lot of positive exposure and we're here because in such a tent filled political year where we have so much vitriol being thrown around around this election we wanted to do a vigil where we're lifting up a different tone a tone that's welcoming and encouraging of people going out to vote but doing it in a way that is not uh, rhetoric being thrown back and forth we're also here in support of the workers inside that's why we're here at the county board of elections they got a tough job today so we're here to support them support the voters and we've been in prayer for almost three days straight now in prayer and also praying the rosary and it's a really important part of who we are as an organization as promise arizona and that's what it's been about thank you rudy in front of the maricopa county recorder's office sarah lichterman cronkite news it's a ritual every presidential nominee gets to partake in. And both Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump were able to partake in it today. Coming up on Cronkite News, we show you how the candidates' reactions after they were able to vote for themselves. And many consider Arizona as a battleground state this evening. But the presidential election isn't the only race impacting Arizonans. How local races could have a lasting impact in the state. This is a box, a box that shows you a world beyond your own. It was just a box, but the world has changed, and so have we. And now the box can be almost any size or shape. And you decide what you want to explore, any time, any place. Break out of the box with PBS. presidential candidates making their final stop on the campaign trail, the voting booth. Both Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump are in New York tonight, awaiting results after casting their ballot earlier this morning. Hillary Clinton and her husband, Bill Clinton, cast their ballot in their hometown of Chappaqua, New York. Clinton told reporters the experience was humbling. I know how much responsibility goes with this, and uh, so many people are counting on the outcome of this election, what it means for our country, and I'll do the very best I can if I'm fortunate enough to, to win today. Meanwhile, Republican presidential nominee Donald Trump cast his ballot in New York City. He says he's feeling confident about the outcome this evening. His running mate, Mike Pence, was in Indiana this morning to vote. Pence said he voted for Trump. We're just so grateful for the support and prayers of people all across the United States, uh, for Donald Trump and for uh, our, our firm belief that we can make America great again. Many are considering this presidential election one of the most important in the history of the United States, and the first states are already being called. Kate Pfeiffer and Alicia Gonzalez join us from the national desk with an update. Our home state, along with Nevada, New Hampshire, Florida, and North Carolina, are key battleground states for either presidential candidate to win. While we have 11 electoral votes in Arizona, New Hampshire has four, and Florida has the most, with 29 electoral votes that could push either candidate closer to that magic 270 number they need to win the electorate. Right now, voting polls have already closed in the eastern part of the country. Donald Trump has won both Indiana and Kentucky, a total of 19 electoral votes, while Hillary Clinton takes Vermont, three electoral votes. In a little under an hour, we should know where most of Florida, New Hampshire, South Carolina, and Virginia stand, and we'll be ready to update you where those 55 electoral votes are leaning at 8 p.m. The presidential race isn't the only thing that Arizonans are deciding this evening. From legalizing marijuana to re-electing Sheriff Joe Arpaio to a seventh term, Arizonans have their say in several important races. Cronkite News reporter Danielle Kernkamp gets us up to date on the Arizona ballot. Danielle? Not only is Arizona a nationwide battleground state, but we have some races of our own to vote for, starting with the race for Senate. 
U.S. Senate incumbent John McCain is seeking re-election. He first took the seat in 1987, nearly 30 years ago. He's up against Democratic Representative Ann Kirkpatrick, who's giving up her seat in U.S. Congressional District 1 to run for Senate. Now vying for the seat in District 1 is Republican and former Pinal County Sheriff Paul Babu and Democratic former State Senator Tom O'Halloran. In District 2, Republican incumbent Martha McSally faces Democrat and former State Representative Matt Hines. Andy Biggs and Talia Fuentes are facing off for the seat in District 5. Maricopa County is voting on whether to elect a new sheriff today. Joe Arpaio is seeking his seventh term against Democrat Paul Penzone. Penzone, a retired Phoenix police sergeant, lost to Arpaio in 2012. If Arpaio is convicted on his contempt of court charge, it would not stop him from taking office. Arizona is one of five states voting whether to legalize recreational marijuana. Proposition 205 would allow anyone 21 and up to grow, possess, privately use, and give away up to one ounce. It would also add a 15% tax on marijuana and all marijuana products, which would go towards public health and education. Proposition 206 would raise the minimum wage in Arizona. If passed, the state's minimum wage would rise to $10 an hour in 2017 and 12 an hour in 2020. It would also create a right to paid sick leave. Our Cronkite News teams will be here in the First Amendment Forum as folks gather in to watch the results come in. We'll be talking with them about the impact of these results on the future of our state. In the First Amendment Forum, Danielle Kernkamp, Cronkite News. Maricopa County made voting for ASU students a lot easier this election by placing a polling place close to home. For the first time, there is a polling location on the ASU Tempe campus. We've seen a lot of great turnout today, a lot of students voting, a lot of community members voting, and a lot of staff and faculty coming in to vote today. So I think it's a great turnout, it's a great service to the student body. Students are grateful for this location. It's like an awesome opportunity for more people to get involved and more people to be able to vote. I was like so excited and happy about it. I'm in USG too, the undergraduate student government, and we were like pushing for this for so long and like just so excited to be able to have this. They hope to get out an important message about voting. Being able to come vote between classes or while you're on your lunch break or being able to vote after classes is extremely important and when we have polling places a mile away from campus it does make it harder for students to vote so we're hoping that this helps increase accessibility for students and helps increase the turnout this year. And the students may have been listening. I just wanted to get involved it was my first one I could vote in so I figured it was time to get involved. <laughs> a lot of people look down on politics we just don't like it but it's it's our future it's it's our schools it's our roads it's it's everything so i think going out and voting like there's nothing more important than voting they hope to have a large turnout we're hoping to see uh, a couple thousand this location will be here for years to come and they hope to add another one in four years the polling location is planned on being used in every election to come it was certainly a gorgeous day for exercising your civic duty. Tyler Klaus is in the Weather Center with what you can expect if you have yet to hit the polls. Alex, like you said, it was really warm here in Phoenix. We're still at 88 degrees. Around the state, it's a lot cooler in places like the Grand Canyon, 57 degrees, and Shiloh is also at 57 degrees. If we're here in the valley, we're still seeing a lot of that orange, 88 degrees, pretty everywhere in Glendale, Levine at 86, and Chandler at 84. If you are still heading out to those poles tonight, if you're headed out right about now, you should see temperatures about 87 all across the valley. If you're headed out about 6 p.m., 84, and as your poles are closing tonight at 7 p.m., 81 degrees with some clouds rolling in. The good news is as we take a look at your seven day forecast. You can see temperatures go back to normal. Once we hit Wednesday, temperatures are back to about 85 degrees, 82 degrees on Thursday and Friday. And then we get back to the 80s all through the next week with sunny skies. Tyler Klaus, Cronkite Weather. On this election night, Cronkite News is especially proud to be the news division of Arizona PBS. And our team coverage continues with Arizona Horizon in PBS NewsHour. On the next Arizona Horizon, it's Election Day. We'll look at the psychological factors about why people vote the way they do. And we'll hear from a presidential historian who says this is the most divisive race for the White House since 1860. I'm Judy Woodruff on the next news hour, the start of live coverage all night, election night, of what we've all been waiting for, the results of campaign 2016, Tuesday on the PBS News Hour. As a reminder, our news team, more than 100 reporters strong, are live across the valley and across the country. Let's check in with some of them one more time. In New York City, results are trickling in from the East Coast as supporters are trickling in to the Clinton campaign party. No big results yet, but Cronkite News will be live in New York City throughout the night to bring you the results you need to know. 
I'm Katie. I'm Katie Beery, live at the Hyatt in downtown Phoenix for the Arizona GOP watch party. This is a state that has leaned heavily red in the past, voting for Republicans in the past 15 out of 16 presidential elections, with the exception being former President Bill Clinton, Hillary Clinton's husband. Stay with us for reaction from this watch party and more. In Phoenix, Katie Beery, Cronkite News. I'm Joey Carrera at the Democratic Watch Party in downtown Phoenix, where the crowd is anxiously awaiting the direction that our new president will take us, and we'll be covering that for you throughout the night. In downtown Phoenix, Joey Carrera, Cronkite News. And I'm Carla Liriano at the Election Land Center in Phoenix, where we'll week, we will keep monitoring voter access at the polls as they start to close later tonight. Be sure to stay with us for live election night coverage through the evening. Cronkite News in Arizona Horizon will have hourly updates starting at 6.57 tonight and starting at 8 p.m. on Arizona PBS World 8.3. We will have continuous live coverage of the latest election results and reaction from across the state and nation. That's it for Cronkite News tonight. For top election stories throughout the evening, head to cronkitenews.azpbs.org and follow Cronkite News on Facebook and Twitter. Arizona PBS will have the largest team of reporters covering election 2016 in Arizona. Election night coverage begins with Cronkite News live at 5 p.m., followed by Arizona Horizon at 5.30 p.m. and PBS NewsHour at 6. Then special election coverage begins at 8 p.m. on World, combining the news gathering resources of Cronkite News with the critical analysis of Arizona Horizon with Ted Simons. Get the latest on election 2016 at cronkitenews.azpbs.org. Support for Arizona PBS comes from viewers like you and from today's program.